जी मिस्टर जैन ग्रेग एंड अदर डिग्नेटरीज प्रेजेंट फॉर दिस वर्कशॉप लेट मी स्टार्ट विथ थैंकिंग ऑल द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स फॉर गिविंग दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू कम दिस आफ्टरनून एंड टॉक सम ऑफ द एक्टिविटीज द कंसर्नस एंड ऑफकोर्स लॉट ऑफ पॉजिटिव विच आर हैपनिंग नाउ डेज फ्रॉम रेगुलेटरी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू let me also start with recently concluded international conference of drug regulatory authority authorities popularly called as igdra a hugely successful event uh, from 14th to 18th which was last friday we concluded and uh, uh, delegates from more than 120 countries uh, attended that and it is important to tell all of you this year because it was a regulators conference and uh, the topics of quality um in different domains of pharmaceuticals was one of the main topic which was discussed some of you i'm sure would have attended that uh it was a hugely successful conference all the delegates from world over had only one common comment to give was that we have rebenchmarked the igra conference for the world and it will be difficult for other countries or other hosts to emulate and uh, repeat the performance which uh, we did in uh, new delhi so a big positive for us in front of uh, global regulators uh, greg was one of the uh, delegates attending the conference and i'm sure greg has the same op- same opinion uh with this one more thing which has come very clear is that the whole world is looking towards india and in one or the other word um it has been reiterated by different speakers at different times and as a country our honorable prime minister has also been always speaking about it that we have a commitment towards global public health and uh, we have been uh, doing our bit of responsibility um uh, with respect to supplying generic medicines to more than 200 company uh, countries of the world we have established ourselves in generic business but one good thing which is happening now is the shift from value from some volume to value has started showing up in different areas very strong research and also now in some of the areas the manufacturing capabilities have come up in the fields of uh, biologics medical devices digital health discovery research and a lot of parallel activities are happening which shows a very bright future for indian pharma and it is showing very clearly that we are moving beyond generics and that's what which uh, it has to be because um, if we have to meet the target of 130 billion us dollars as uh, the trade value by 2030 this shift from volume to value has to happen so we are moving in the right direction and a lot of signals are coming from international organizations international activities which has happened uh, especially with relation to india some of them if i can um, name first and foremost foremost is we recently concluded our nra assessment for vaccine regulations and uh, we uh, by who and uh, we actually were assessed using the version 6 uh, of the uh, benchmarking tool and we got ml3 which is actually a very good achievement for a uh, country like india um, and that was not very easy to hit the ml3 so that is one um, successful um milestone which we hit which has huge impact on our vaccine industry in this country second important event which happened recently is that we have been given the membership associate membership of uh, imdrf very important for medical device uh, industry in this country a fledgling industry which is uh, which has a high potential and has been identified as a sun, sunshine industry for uh, for the country and we expect the success of generic pharmaceutical business 
would be repeated for medical device industry also in time to come. And uh, it will contribute hugely towards trade as well as the public health support for this country. Uh, another important milestone sometime back we hit was the inclusion of Indian Pharmacopoeia in pharmaceutical discussion group. Most of you know this. Uh, IGRA hosting itself was an, uh, a recognition of our capabilities and future potential. Um, similarly, we have been awarded by WHO to host the international um, pharmacopoeia um, meeting uh, sometime in February. That is also reposing faith on Indian system, Indian regulatory system especially. Um, we have now around more than 20 different model of engagement, including MOUs with uh, international regulators of different countries. We already have 12 countries recognizing Indian pharmacopoeia, and many of them are at advanced stage of negotiation. You will see this number hitting 20 very shortly. So I'm, I'm telling you all this because these are all in one way or the other, recognizing us as a country, our strength in regulatory system, in manufacturing, in supply, and our commitment towards global public health. Um, one more um, recognition, if I can say, which is worth mentioning is not because I am directly involved, but the uh, but I have been uh, basically nominated on the board of uh, Uppsala Monitoring Center, which is basically the custodian for all the pharmacovigilance data on behalf of WHO for the whole world. So these are the recognitions which we have got from international bodies, and uh, we have to see and understand that the whole world, as I said, is looking towards India, and all these uh, recognitions or the faith which international bodies are demonstrating or showing on us, we have to re reciprocate uh, in equal terms. So with all these international recognitions, and there are so many internal positives which I will touch upon in uh, due course, but we have to understand that when I look from top, we, I see that we have all these ingredients to become successful and be at the top in a continued manner, in a sustainable manner, as we are being called as pharmacy of the world at this moment of time. I always say that reaching a top may be a little easier as compared to maintaining that position. And that is so sensitive that all of us have to work together to maintain that uh, position. And at the center of all this is the quality because pharmaceutical business is one business where the core is quality. And I have been telling in all my addresses that unless until we recognize that quality is the core of pharma business, we will never be successful and we will never be sustainable with respect to keeping our position at the top of uh, the world with respect to um, helping the, the global public health and supplying the required uh, medicine and healthcare components. When we come to the internal situation, we are doing good. I mean, we are not uh, at all at a bad, uh, in a bad shape. In fact, we are doing very good. If we see some of the indicators, the markets are growing. Government's healthcare expenditure is increasing. R&D, as I see from uh, the present position, very interesting pipeline in different domains, not only discovery, but we see medical device kind of startups are coming, the kind of digital health, initiatives are being developed in the country and being used. Uh, from a regulator's point of view, a lot of high-tech products are being approved. For example, the CAR T cell therapy recently approved for blood cancer. The software as a medical device, we have started approving. The mRNA platform, we approved for first vaccine. And there are other products in pipeline. So we are actually uh, 
developing and approving the latest technology based products in this country that's a big positive for us as a country if we see the biosimilar space we are doing extremely good i was looking at the data and i saw that 42 different molecules in the biosimilar space have been approved by uh, us and another data is that 49 different products have been approved in biosimilar space in last three years only. and we have actually started exporting many of these biosimilar products so i see huge potential in this space in next five years um, the way things are going if i I'm sure it's important to mention um, a bit of uh, risk-based inspections because it has given huge positive from a regulator point of view. We would have uh, audited more than 700 organizations between the analytical uh, laboratories and the manufacturing units. A lot of uh, observations, lots of learnings, which is more important for us. Not important is that how many of them were closed or how many of them were penalized. But what is important is it gave us so much of understanding about the ground reality in the pharma space, which is being now used to correct lots of systems and processes in the regulatory space. So that was worth mentioning. A um, lot of internal changes have happened and are happening in CDSU also. Many of you are uh, witnessing those changes. The kind of uh, feedback which I get is very encouraging and motivating for us. Uh, some of the important ones, if I can name, uh, is one of them which I always quote, which is because very good data, is converting the um, export NOC uh, issuance time from 20 to 60 days when it was uh, being done uh, as per the old process when different states were issuing it. We uh, took it in the central um, CDSU's hand, converted it into online process. And last four or five months since we started doing it, the data is 2.86 days. We are issuing uh, export NOC against 20 to 60 days on an average was happened earlier. So a big uh, positive and big motivator for uh, CDSU uh, team members because we are and the team is looking at the data in front of them and they are now convinced that there is other way of uh, working also. Similarly, if I see examples like recently we uh, waived some of the cough syrup analysis till now about a month back or maybe the first of this month, we were actually um, analyzing in uh, designated laboratories, 100% of cup syrup batches which were being exported, just to be sure that the history doesn't repeat. And uh, then based on the data analysis of last more than one year, we have uh, already waived a good amount of batches uh, which are coming from a specific kind of uh, uh, plants and being exported to a specific kind of countries. Those need not be tested. So database analysis and decision making is happening. We recently uh, named six countries from where if drugs from five domain is being imported or if the companies from uh, these six countries are applying for approval, we don't. Uh, we will not ask for second or repeat clinical trial, which is happening till now. So this is also a big positive in regu from regulatory point of view because this will give the uh, required medicine in... Um, unmet medical need conditions um, to the patients of this country earlier than uh, later. As soon as possible, we'll be able to provide these medicines from these countries. So just to, uh, um, I mean, these points were some of the uh, points which tells us that we are doing a lot internally also. It's not only that external recognition is happening. Um, I would also like to mention two big milestones which we have hit recently is that for the first time in the history of Indian regulator, we have engaged uh, world-class management consultants. One is Kaizen, which is looking at our internal processes, how we work, how we communicate with customers, 
how we communicate internally with each other, where is the energy loss, where is the efficiency loss. Uh, and the second, we have also um, engaged with uh, BCG, which is looking at uh, our regulations and identifying that where are the opportunities of rationalization so that the regulation becomes lighter so that we are able to execute them with more uh, rigor and uh, force, uh, keeping the regulations light for the stakeholders to comply better uh, for serious players in the in the game. So, um, I mean, these were some of the uh, areas where a lot of positive things are happening. Now, coming to uh, the other aspects where as a government, we are facing issues from uh, some of the stakeholders which need attention and uh, correction. So, the why I say these issues are important to be addressed and corrected is that because of these issues, a lot of energy and resources in the government side uh, is wasted. I'll take an um, uh, example of, say, cough syrup only. It's a history now and it was an aberration. For me, it was not a systemic issue. But whatever happened, one or two cases, it sucked so much of energy from our system and is still it's uh, not closed in one way or the other, uh, keeps on coming back and we have to justify, we have to give explanation, we have to give the status report. And it's very difficult for you all to imagine that how much energy it has sucked from uh, our system. And this all happened only because somebody decided that it is not important to test the quality of the incoming raw material. And it's not very difficult. It's not also very cost intensive. These companies were not small companies. They had the infrastructure, they had the wherewithal, they had the manpower. But it's simple mindset that they will be able to manage it, just do it. It is not required to test the incoming material. And what was the result? Everybody knows. Those two companies are not there. They are vanished from the scene. Their business loss is there. But on our part, we lost so much of energy which would have been put in our positive uh, country uh, for positive contribution. Also, today, uh, as I mentioned, that 12 countries have already recognized Indian pharmacopoeia. But practically, wherever we go to present our case for recognition, the biggest pushback which we get is on quality. The apprehension of these countries about quality of Indian products, which may be right, wrong, that's a different debate. But that's a perception which is there in the system. And if it was not there, we would have crossed more than 50 recognitions by now. But that is, as I said, that's the biggest pushback which we get. And we have to do convincing for two rounds or three rounds, and then they understand uh, the situation and then they recognize. So one small incidence, which is aberration, creates so much of issues for, for the country. And as a regulator, we have so much to do. And a person like me who understands that how much more can be done and how much more is required to be done in this country from regulatory point of view. Sometimes it's frustrating that why are we simply firefighting for something which is which should not be there in the system. And here is what I was saying that the industry need to support our initiatives in as many words. If we have to be successful, we have to be together and together we have to travel through this path and uh, uh, do this journey. This firefighting, which I said, if you see, it's a calculated number which I have, more than 25 to 30% of my resources of CDSCO is invested in doing RBI every month. And that is happening 
you can understand how much it is killing for us. I cannot stop it because that is giving us a lot of positives from uh, our, from regulatory point of view. Having said that, if my 25-30% of resources are going in one activity, RBI, which can be avoided if people become compliant, I mean, what best can we have that these 25-30% resources can be put for some other uh, positive activity from regulatory point of view? And whatever I uh, pointed out as positive developments, that would probably double if I have all those resources putting in RBI, put in uh, doing the rational, regulatory rationalization activities. So, but good part is that this 25-30% which I'm putting on RBIs has actually been extracted from within the system. We did not get any new resources for this. So I could extract the efficiency from the system and the file approval delays are not happening. It is either improved or it is same as what it was earlier. So people are working uh, with more efficiency, but for me, in spite of our, all this good work, a lot of wastage is happening in resources, which can be saved uh, if we start working together. If our energies are channelized in the right direction, nobody can stop us. We have all those ingredients to become most successful in the world. But only thing is we have to channelize our energy in the right direction. Need support from industry in taking the success story forward. I know IPA is doing a lot of activities to support quality campaign. And I have been very closely working with uh, IPA, IDMA and other organizations. And um, the activities like conducting this kind of workshop which is very important for this country, which is happening today, the ninth edition. Similarly, I have also seen IPA getting involved in many more um, capacity building activities related to the quality. One of their big initiatives coming up, I think, in Ahmedabad about the training institute. That is going to be a game changer for me, if you ask, uh, because I am seeing all these issues from very uh, close quarters. Um, I also wanted to thank and congratulate IPA for getting this prestigious award of Best Association Excellence Award uh, at India Association Congress, a big boost and also a testimony to the activity of IPA, what they do, how they do and uh, how futuristic their thinking is and how um, are they concerned about the issues of quality and how they are supporting this whole campaign? So congratulations, uh, Mr. Jain and team. Um, you are doing great, great job for the country, for the industry, and of course, also for the association. But what is more important is one or association like IPA in this big country, in this industry of more than 50 billion US dollars cannot do all what is required. We need many more IPAs. We need many more associations working in, in the way IPA is working. And ultimately, it comes to the fact that each individual have to have that feeling that they have the responsibility towards this country and the industry in this country. Otherwise, this will not correct. And we will lose the game, which is almost low hanging for us. But if we do not understand and if we do not correct ourselves, uh, I'm sorry, we will miss the bus and that will be very painful. With this, I would like to congratulate and convey my best wishes to IPA for organizing this important workshop and also best wishes to delegates uh, for these two days of uh, intensive learning. All the best. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you.